I'm Sarah Maki and I'm an adventurer. So an adventure for me, it's chasing a vision and then you don't know the ending of it. I walk from Siberia through all the way through Australia, means through Mongolia, through China, uh, through Laos, Thailand, and then I took a cargo boat where I traveled for 13 days all the way to Australia. I went through Australia and finished in the south. Uh, in my little tree, which is, was a tree that I made in a Nullarbor plain. It's an empty plain where there is only one tree. Being nominated by National Geographic means a lot to me because when I was a kid, I didn't have pocket money. So my dad uh, said to me, if you want pocket money, you'd need to go slug hunting in a garden. And what I did with this pocket money, I went to uh, to the shop and buy National Geographic magazine. So for me to be nominated by the National Geographic means a lot because I think that's where the dream began at that time. So it takes two years to make a preparation of an expedition like that. So I, I studied the topographic map and I decide where I'm going to go through some mountain you need to study the, the map for days to know exactly where the mountains will let you go, where there is water and then food. So the food, I carry the food on me all the time. I've got a, a cart, a trolley. So without my trolley in those remote places in Mongolia will not be possible. So I need to carry 50 kilograms of extra water and extra food to be able from point A to point B. It's like 100 kilometers between those two points. And without my car, it is not possible. So my car, it's like an extension of myself. So I talk to my car, I, I give a name, and uh, it's really like a funny relationship with this car because it's really heavy and I cross sand dunes with it, I cross mountain, I carry, uh, I, I've done everything with that car. No. Yes, um, I've been sick all night. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea where that thing come from. I'm never sick, really. never, never, never. Once every ten years, and it is today. All right. The jungle uh, start for me uh, with a funny feeling, really painful muscles. And the hours was going down and I suddenly I had this big headache, huge headache. And suddenly I was sweating. <laughs> so then I had the warning sign and then I realized I was going through one of those weird jungle fever. Um, what I'm worried about is I want to wear here. It's in the middle of nowhere, so the road stop that way. <laughs> so to get out of here, it could be difficult. I was ready for my three days of really high fever, and included delirium. I knew that you could go out of your mind and do some crazy things, and you don't realize you do you are doing it. So for this reason, I decided to film myself every hour. I feel like I want to try. And then I went through it. I thought, it's not gonna last forever. But the good thing, it's when you pass a storm, when you've got a problem, you always know that's gonna hand up one day. It's not gonna last. You just have to, hanging there, and that will last. And that's what I did. And I, after three days and really, really high fever, I survived. So 
So be a woman alone in those place in the world, it is not easy and it's not safe. And to be able to do these things alone with no support vehicle, no support, no crew behind me. I'm alone, completely alone. So I disguise myself as a man. My hair is tied up under a big hat. And from far away anyway, you can see I'm a man. I'm not, I'm not showing any woman, <laughs> woman side of me, it's gone. I'm suddenly this man walking. And this is the only way to survive those, those really difficult country as a woman. So when the expedition finishes, I've got this mixed feeling inside me. I'm really sad about that's the end of it. I'm not going to sleep on the ground anymore. I'm not going to be able to do my little tea in the morning with three sticks. Uh, I'm in Australia and uh, I just make a cup of tea. It's not, it's not just a cup of tea. It's the last cup of tea. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's my last fire. I'm actually, um, yeah, five kilometers that way there. Five kilometers that way there is my tree. I know it is the end, and I also know that it has to be, has to be, I have to reach the end one day. So it's a, it's really mixed emotion about sadness and happiness. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I left. In Siberia, the 20th of June 2010. Today it's the 17th May 2013. It's an achievement, a huge achievement, and also the end of something. So I usually, I try not to cry, but I am crying, of course. <laughs> and, I, and I reached my tree crying under my sunglasses. I tried to hide and it was really emotional for me. Uh, for all my body and my soul, it was, was a big, big, big thing to get to my tree. So I live here in the Alps. Uh, for me, it's really important to be away from everything. And this is a really nice peace and quiet paradise for me, where I write my book here. So I just finished it. And uh, I'm this wide little thing. I'm not a social, uh, a social person. So I like to be quiet and, and hiding in, a, in, in this little corner of the world. So walking is not about walking, really. Walking give me a, a sense of be part of this, of this planet. A way to seeing things, to smell things, to understand things uh, more instinctively. Uh, there is a speed to it, a built-in speed. And this speed, it's our speed, it's walking speed. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>